In this video, I'm going to help you unlearn the most common daily habits that are damaging your metabolism. Keep in mind, all the things we'll cover in this video are wildly popular in diet culture today. Millions of people turn to these things in hopes of fat loss. They think they're doing something healthy and beneficial for their bodies, but nothing could be further from the truth. I want to warn you here, I may name some things in this video that you believe will work for you, and maybe even some things that you've been practicing for a long time. It's never a fun experience to be told that the things you're working so hard to do are actually harming your health. I know this feeling very well. I've been where you are, doing everything right and not getting the results I deserve for all of my hard work. If I name some harmful practices in this video that you are currently doing, don't blame yourself. This is not your fault. It's the information's fault. Remove yourself from the information and keep an open mind. Here's a list of the most popular and most harmful trends in diet culture today. Low calorie diets and low calorie foods, micronutrient deficiencies, plant-based diets and high fiber diets, very low carb diets and also carnivore diets, low protein diets, fasting and intermittent fasting, chronic cardio and high intensity interval training like boot camps, P90X, spin class, orange theory, CrossFit, and more. As you look at that list, Notice the feelings that come up for you, especially if you're actively practicing or participating in any of those things in hopes of losing weight. You may be thinking, there's no way those things are bad for me. I've been doing them for years. Everybody says these are the best ways to lose weight or one of the most common responses I get. But Justin, if I stop doing these things, I'll get fat. That's actually the most common reaction I get from people. If you're feeling a little confused about how these things could be harming you, ask yourself one simple question. Have any of the things you've tried gotten you the results you've wanted long-term? Sure, some of them may have worked for a little while, but what about long-term? If any of these things worked for you long-term, you wouldn't be here. Sure, someone could try one or more of these things for a short period of time and maybe lose a few pounds, but the weight always comes back. What works in the short term never seems to work in the long-term, and people end up stuck on a dieting roller coaster constantly gaining and losing the same five to 20 pounds over and over and over again, sometimes for decades. I wanna share this direct quote from a highly controlled scientific study on caloric restriction for weight loss. Quote, after repeated cycles of dieting, weight loss occurred at half the rate and weight gain occurred at three times the rate compared to controls with the same caloric intake, end quote. Simply put, chronic dieting makes it twice as hard to lose weight and three times easier to gain weight. It's no wonder countless millions of people are struggling with weight loss every single day. I wanna share some incredible evidence from pop culture to help drive this point home. It's called the Biggest Loser Study. Yes, from the popular TV show by the same name. Researchers followed 14 contestants through their time on the show and for years after. The conclusion was that all of the contestants gained back all the weight they lost on the show and some of them even gained more. Researchers concluded that the contestants suffered serious hormonal imbalances and significantly slowed their metabolisms over the course of their time on the show. A medical doctor and obesity expert from Harvard Medical School had this to say about the Biggest Loser study findings. Quote, by the final weigh-in, contestants' leptin levels had plummeted, so they had very little of the hormone, rendering them constantly hungry. They also had a slow metabolism. In other words, their thyroid function which governs metabolism and many other bodily functions, had slowed." End quote. But it gets worse. It doesn't stop there. Again, researchers followed these contestants for years after the show, and they discovered that the contestants' metabolisms had not recovered even six years later. Here's another direct quote from the Harvard medical doctor. Quote, over the following six years, the combined effects of these hormonal changes conspired to make the contestants regain much, if not all, of the weight they lost. But the truly shocking part was that their leptin and metabolism levels never rebounded to what they had been before the show. In fact, the more weight a contestant lost, the worse his or her slow metabolism became. This explains why weight regain was inevitable, even though they were eating less food than ever. End quote. What's truly frightening about this example is that The Biggest Loser TV show recruited some of the most popular and well-respected trainers and nutritionists in the world, and their protocols were directly responsible for the horrible damage done to these poor contestants' metabolisms. And remember, contestants filmed this show for just 11 weeks. Think about that. 11 weeks was enough of a stress on their bodies that their metabolisms and hormones had not recovered six years later. That's astonishing. 
Most new clients who come to me for coaching have been dieting in some way, shape, or form for years, if not decades, far longer than 11 weeks. And if you're watching this, odds are you've probably done the same. Can you imagine the kind of metabolic damage that has been done here? In the next lesson, I'm going to teach you exactly how this kind of metabolic damage happens as a result of mainstream diet and fitness protocols. You're going to learn about metabolic rate and why it's the only thing you truly need to understand to take back your health. Diet and fitness culture's focus on calories has taken the focus off of metabolic health, and it's the primary reason for poor health in America today. Most of the things you are doing in an attempt to lose weight are decreasing your metabolic rate. When you attempt to lose weight through cutting calories or over-exercising like the Biggest Loser contestants, you literally starve your body in hopes that it will burn its own body fat to survive. The problem is this is an extremely stressful experience for the body. It elevates stress hormones like cortisol, prolactin, adrenaline, and glucagon, and sends warning signals to the body that food is scarce in the environment and it may run out soon. Life requires energy. Your body requires energy, and a lot of it. The average American male requires a minimum of about 1,700 calories per day, even if they are completely sedentary. And the average female requires a minimum of about 1,400 calories per day, even if they are completely sedentary. If they're living in an active lifestyle or participating in intentional exercise, the number only goes up from there. Everything from your heart beating, your lungs expanding and contracting, your eyelids blinking, to conversations, thinking, and daily activity requires energy. The body creates energy from food. No food, no energy. When you trick your body into believing that food is scarce, it will adapt by doing less. It quickly realizes there is not enough food for its usual energy output. Similar to a bear going into hibernation, the body lowers its metabolic rate as much as possible in an attempt to conserve energy. After all, if it doesn't conserve energy, you will die. The body is an incredible adaptation machine, and it's very good at not dying. This is why following low-calorie diets for a long time makes you feel terrible, and you start to experience all sorts of unpleasant symptoms. Digestive issues, low energy, mood swings, low libido, poor sleep, feeling cold all the time, sensitive teeth and nails, thinning hair and skin, depression, anxiety, and more. All of these symptoms come from the body not having enough energy. Pay close attention to what I say next because it is the single most important concept you will ever learn about health and wellness. Obesity and chronic health conditions are caused by a lack of energy in the body. I know, I know this goes against everything diet culture has ever told you. They say that you gain weight because you have too much energy. Nothing could be further from the truth. Those people are confusing calories with energy. And that mistake has led to immeasurable suffering by hundreds of millions of people constantly struggling to lose weight and get healthy. All of the most common diet culture trends I mentioned earlier in this video lower the amount of energy your body has available and work directly against your goals because they add to the lack of energy in your body. Your body responds to this energy crisis and the fastest way to lower its metabolic rate is to start shutting down organ functions. The first thing to go is the production of sex hormones. After all, if the body thinks it's starving to death due to a lack of food in the environment, the last thing it wants to do is bring another life into this world through reproduction. So it shuts down sex drive and sex hormones first. And it's worth noting here that this is the primary driver of the infertility epidemic we're currently seeing in Western society. After sex hormones, the body begins running at a lower body temperature, yet another way to conserve energy. This is why people who follow low calorie diets feel cold all the time. From there, the body starts shutting down certain repair mechanisms. This leads to the appearance of aging faster than you'd like. You may notice more wrinkles or bags under your eyes. Hair will start thinning or falling out. Teeth and nails will start feeling sensitive or brittle. You may find that you bruise easily and take a long time to recover from injuries. As you can see, the less energy the body has available, the worse things become over time. To make matters worse, as the body shuts down functions, your resting metabolic rate is getting lower and lower. And this is where the calories in, calories out model falls flat on its face. You cannot continue to just cut calories indefinitely to continue losing weight. This would inevitably lead to death, and the body protects against this. When your resting metabolic rate gets too low and the body is suffering from a severe lack of energy, you'll start to get intense cravings telling you to eat more food. This is one of the most primal survival mechanisms we have built into us. When this happens, it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when you will binge on whatever food you can get your hands on. 
the cravings will become unbearable. And before you know what happened, you're staring down at an empty pint of ice cream, a pizza box full of nothing but crumbs, and an empty bag of potato chips. You almost don't even remember eating them. And what does the body do with all of the junk you've just eaten? It stores it immediately as a backup energy source just in case you decide to keep starving yourself like a lunatic. These are the underlying mechanisms of harmful binge behavior. And it all stems from the same root cause, a lack of energy in the body. We must unlearn anything and everything that leads to a catastrophic lack of energy in the body. Fasting, low protein, low carb, low calorie, chronic cardio workouts, high intensity workouts, especially doing them fasted. 